Hi, so here we are back in my workshop for another tutorial. On this occasion, we're going to be learning how to connect the FlipSky Mini FSC4 brushless speed controller. You'll need two of them if you're connecting them to the Q85s or two, any type of two brushless motors, basically. Now, usually people are using the Robotech SBL1360, two of them, or the SBL2360, just one of them, because that's a dual speed controller. Now, they are expensive, but they are bulletproof. They are really good speed controllers but it's time we found an affordable option. And these are just under 50 UK pounds each in US dollars, that's about $70, maybe just under 70 US dollars. Special thanks to Matt Denton for finding these. He's used these in his Lego go-kart, so be sure to check out his Lego go-kart videos on YouTube if you haven't done so already. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how to connect these up, how to use the software and get your Q85 running, but you can use these on any brushless motor really, whether it's just the one or the two. We'll get them speaking to each other through the receiver and we'll dive in now and we'll show you what needs to be done. So first of all, what comes in the packet? Of course, your speed controller. Now, these are your three connections that are going to connect to the lead that comes with the Q85 motors. You've got these three connections here, the green, the blue and the yellow. And then you've got the C1, B1 and A1. But don't worry about that. Then you've got the smaller connectors here, which have got these space connectors on, which can be a bit of a faff um, connecting them to the speed controllers, the Robotech speed controllers anyway. But this is a lot easier, which we'll get to in a minute. And then what else we've got here? Instructions, of course. Hopefully you won't need them because you're watching the video and this video will hopefully mean you don't need this. We'll keep that handy. USB lead to speak to the software and the speed controller. And this is the useful lead that I was talking about. Now, this is usually the connector that you have to get hold of and connect to the Q85 wire um, to, to connect to the Robotech speed controller. However, this comes with it. So I can literally just cut this off and connect it to the lead. So what I'm going to do first of all is cut these off and connect them to that. And I'll explain what order I do that in a minute. But it actually doesn't matter because the software that comes with this speed controller it's so intuitive that it sorts all that out for you. But I do keep it in a colour order just for just to keep it simple, really. Um, just as a point as well, the Robotex, the SBL2360, for example, which I've got here on the screen, it's 30 amp with a 60 volt input up to 60 volt. This is an 8 volt to 60 volt, so it's the same. Um, but it's got a continuous of 50 amps with a burst of up to 150 amp. So it claims to be more powerful than the Robotech. The Robotech's plenty powerful enough, so I'm sure these are going to be fine. Um, don't forget, if you still choose to go for the Robotech after seeing the tutorial about these, you do get a 10% discount through the club. Um, you need to contact Blake at Robotech, but if you look on the forum on astromech.net, you'll see a link to a discount that um, I managed to broker with Blake a few years back. So right, let's get on with the connection, and first of all, we'll show you how to download the software. First of all, you need to click on this link, which I'll include in the comments of the video. So we'll click on the link and you need to create an account. So make sure you create yourself an account. I've already logged in, so um, I've just got the logout option here. But create yourself an account and then go down to the bottom of the page. You don't need to pay for any of the versions of the software. You go for the VESC tool free, but you have to add it to cart. Now, even though, make sure it always says zero, but you obviously just need one. So then it takes you to the checkout page. It shows you that the free version is in here costing you nothing. And you don't have to enter your details here. This is only if you want to get information from the company, updates and so on. So I don't worry about that. No payment required. And we review order. And then we submit the order. So once you've done that, you get an order complete and you go to view your order current status. Let's have a look. It's just for the invoice. And then basically what you have to do is wait for a message in your inbox. So once you've placed your order, you'll get an order confirmation and then you'll receive an email and get an order reference and VESC including the downloads. You might access them with the following links. So I want the Windows version. So I click on the Windows version. 
Then it'll ask me, obviously, if I want to save the file, which I will. So once you've downloaded the file, you get a zip file, certainly Windows you do anyway, and it's just a straight file. You don't need to do an install or anything. So extract this to somewhere safe on your computer, and then you literally just double click on it. You can do this within the zip file, and then that will open the software. Now you will get a warning, uh, but from my experience, it's fine. It works fine. I haven't had any bugs or viruses or anything, so carry on. Obviously you're gonna run it at your own risk, but I can assure you, I've been using it for quite a while now and it's okay. So you've got your software here and it's up and running. So now all we need to do is connect our first speed controller to our motor and then to this software. So now I'll just show you the wiring that I've done and we'll connect it to the software. So I'm not gonna bore you with the whole footage of me doing the soldering, but just so you can see what I've done. Um, the Q85 connector that I've got here certainly had these spade ends on and you've got these bullet connectors here. So what I've done is I've cut the spade ends off, ready to connect them to the wire that came with the speed controller. For now, I've left these bullet connectors on. What I usually do is you could buy some bullet connectors to connect to these three connections here. So you just put the bullets on here, which makes life a lot easier, or you can just get a connector block. I didn't bother soldering these. I use these because you want to maybe disconnect these at some point. So have some kind of connector. I'll show you what I do in a minute. But for now, what I'm going to do is crack will be soldering these and it's going to connect to, we keep this end because that goes into there. So I'm going to give myself a nice long piece. Don't cut it too short. Just cut that off. Yep. So what I'm going to do now I've cut that off is I'm going to connect these colors to the corresponding colors on here. The only color of the differential is there's a blue on here and not on here, but there's an orange. So I'm going to do the orange to the blue, but all the other colors are corresponding. So I'm going to keep the colors the same just for continuity. It's best to do it that way. And when I connect these up as well, I'll keep these with the same letters on each speed controller, um, which I'll get to in a minute. Okay, so that's the soldering done. I've connected all of these on both cables. Don't forget to heat shrink them as well. Don't forget to put your heat shrink on before you solder them together, obviously. We've all done it, I know. Um, and also, being impatient, I haven't got the bullet connectors here in stock. So what I've decided to use is one of these blocks. So we're going to cut these off. You need to strip these back a little bit further and take the solder off if they don't fit in your blocks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect them in order. So we've got the A1, B1, C1 here. So I'm literally going to go A, B, C from top to bottom. And then I'm going to connect these up, taking the bullets off to the corresponding ABC on here. Okay, so that's those three connected. So the top is A, middle is B, lower is C. Now feel free to copy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go blue, green, yellow. So your A goes into the blue, the B goes into the green, and the C goes into the yellow. So I'm just going to do that with the other one and then we get on with connecting up the power and running the software. So now we're going to have a run through of the software. Um, so first of all, we need the transmitter on. So make sure your transmitter is on. Um, you will have bound your receiver beforehand. Hopefully make sure you've done that. Now this is a bench test setup, so please excuse the wiring. Um, but I've always used a safety switch as well, even though it's bench tested. This is a, a 16 amp tripped fuse switch so we power this up like so receivers on now the two speed controllers are connected to numbers two and three on this spectrum ar620 some are numbered now and are not actually labeled but if it is labeled with elevator and aileron you need to use those two connections they should work then when they're switched on you've got a blue light first and the green light comes on and the USB is connected to the right speed controller at the moment, going to my laptop. And the right speed controller will operate the right motor and the left speed controller will operate the left motor just for demonstration purposes. So the first thing we do, you'll try your transmitter and you'll, the motors will probably buzz and do something. I won't show you that because these are actually working as it happens now, but I'll still go through the software. We'll get the same results. We go into motor settings, first of all, and go to motor setup wizard. 
click on next and I don't want to load the default information from the speed controller so we just click on no we make sure it's connected you can connect by clicking in this top right hand icon first of all or I just do auto connect and click next again it's checking if I want to read the information from the speed controller which I don't and then what you do from the drop down here you collect connect select FOC and next okay to that and then with the motors I change these to about 30 amps so I must point out here that these motors aren't 30 amps they're only 10 30. amps but I have tried it with 10 amps in the software and it doesn't behave properly so you do need to set this at 30 amps and you'll see later on that the software adjusts itself to 10 amps. Pulse sensors that's what we're using and then click on next and then this red information here we need to update this so it's correct so what we click is we clicked RL which is resistance and inductance that's what it measures so we click OK to that and what you'll see is some power will go to the motor and you'll just hear a beep and it will go green and then we click the next one along which measures the flux linkage so again we click that again make sure the motor is clear and click OK and this will move a little bit more now so you'll see a little bit of rotation on the motor and once that's done that turns to green and then you make sure you apply this before you go on to the next step so we click on apply and you'll see an update that it says that it's updated and sent to the motor actually let me uh, click on next here and then on this one here these are all zero details this this is the hall sensors so you're going to detect the hall sensors so you start detection by clicking on play and click OK and again it will send some power to the motor you'll see it just moving marginally And the zero figures at the bottom will then have some data in the bottom here change the numbers and then we apply this and then we click on next again and that's finished so the next thing we do i'll just show you the settings that we've got now um, so you'll the general tabs under motor settings in general the general tab will have foc and the sensor port mode is hall sensors this here we can invert the motor direction so if, if you find your motors going the wrong way once you set them both up if you click forward on the stick and one motor is going one way and one going the other you can either choose servo reverse in your transmitter or I would recommend you tell it on the speed controllers um, which needs to be reversed so you can change that and it's simply a true or false so I'll leave them on, on false at the moment then the current which is what I've already set up as 30 this is the details I've altered to 30 amps and minus 30 everything else has been left the same voltage rpm wattage temperature they've all been left as is and then we've got the advanced details here I've just shown you what's on all the tabs just so if you're having any problems you can see what my setup is and maybe change some of the information and and just to at least get them spinning then we go on the FOC setting Again, this is showing red again at the moment. Um, I don't think it matters because we've already updated the information and sent it to the motors. But if you choose to, you can go through this again from this section. There's various ways of doing the same thing. Um, so we'll go through it again, just, just for peace of mind, just to show you what happens here. It's the same thing as you've seen on the wizard. Again, you'll see the motor spinning. we can apply that again so that's just updated the same information sensorless hall sensors that's the information I got from this thing here which the data is input here so we won't worry about doing that again but from this menu you can click on play you can get all the information again and then you apply the information and we've got encoder HFI and advanced which we don't need to touch so next thing we want to do the app settings which is the actual transmitter side of things so we go to the input setup wizard and we click on next 
get some information from the speed controller. And then what we do here is we tell it that it's an RC receiver and click next. And then what we do here is this centers the sticks. So if I push forward, you'll see that it's only on 69% at the moment, roughly. And backwards, it's on 50%. So now we've done that, we click on apply. And what should happen is we should be up to 100% now. There we go, 98, 99, that's good enough. 98, 99 on reverse as well. So that's good. And something I forgot to mention actually, on this here, we go for duty cycle. So we apply duty cycle first. Just apply that. And let's see if it's stored the information of 100%. Refresh that. Go next. And we go next again. Oops, sorry, go back. And this says current no reverse with brake. We change this to duty cycle. Right configuration to the speed controller. And then we go next. And then we finish that. So now what we should have backwards and forwards and there you have it so again we can go into the app settings and go to general and check any of this information if you need to ppm we've got the mapping and the throttle curve so with the mapping it's best if you have the feedback so if you click the rt and the rt app this gives you feedback on what's going on on these menus so if you're not happy and you're not sure if it's doing full throttle or not at any time you can check this and just do this section on its own and do the refresh and apply and that's it that's all you need to know really um that should help you what i will do if anybody's having any problems with this just please contact me um directly through youtube or wherever you found this file and what i'll do is if, if you're having problems yourself i can share a file with you so you can upload a file to your speed controller which should at least get them spinning and then you can go through this um, tutorial again and get the settings that are unique to each motor you need to do this for each motor so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take the us disconnect so we click on disconnect here top right and that will have disconnected. And then you can plug the USB in, take this one out and plug it into your new, other new speed controller. And then we click on connect again and we would go through the same routine. So we go motor settings, motor setup wizards, next. No, we don't want the information, FOC and so on as I've previously shown you. And then you'll have two motors spinning. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Like I say, if you've got any problems, please put them in the comments below or just contact me direct and I'll help you the best I can. Thanks for watching.